When Jesus of Nazareth was baptized by John the Baptist in the waters of the Jordan, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and led into the wilderness. from his work just so long. I should have started back to my farm a week ago. And I to my shop in Dothan. But... Well, my brother will be needing me in our fishing boat, but I can't leave. Not now. If John was the Messiah, if he hadn't denied being the Messiah, I would stay on forever. But he did deny it. I heard him. We all did. As I said, if there was any hope that he was, well, even a prophet like Elijah. Now, uh, why not wait a little longer? The Nazarene may come back. You heard what the Baptist said of him. No, I didn't. Only a dozen versions of what others say was heard from someone they know. I heard John say, there is one among you who is greater than I. I heard him say the Nazarene was the Lamb of God who would take away all the sins of the world. You heard that yourself? As clearly as I hear you. Lamb of God. Lamb of God doesn't mean Messiah. The Baptist. Are you worried because you don't know him? Yes, but I saw the spirit descend as a dove from heaven and it remained on him. I myself did not know him. But he who sent me forth to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and borne witness This is the Son of God. Son of God. If he is what you say, isn't his mission among men? Then why has he gone into the wildlands where there are no men? Yes, why? When will he come back? Did he tell you? No, he did not tell me. When the voice of the Lord first called me to be his servant, I too went into the wilderness. To be near God? Yes. And to be sure that you really heard Jehovah's voice? Oh, no, I was sure of that. No, to be sure of, of myself, of my own worth and fitness. A man so summoned cannot doubt the call. Only his own mortal weaknesses and frailties. He must make very sure of himself. And during 40 days and 40 nights, he ate nothing, and he hungered.
And the tempter came to him, saying, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the tempter took him to the holy city, and they looked down upon it from a pinnacle of the temple. And the voice said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will give his angels charge of you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. not tempt the Lord your God. And the tempter took him to a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said to him, All these will I give you you will fall down and worship me. Be God, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Maybe three weeks ago, horsemen, a whole troop, they tied his hands, flung him on a horse, and rode off with him. Herod's men. Did they take him toward Tiberius? Uh, no, uh, south. To Machaerus. Uh, that's what the followers figured. <laughs> if only he had gone a little farther away, into the Decapolis, or, or the Transjordan, or... Well, he hasn't spoken so sharp about the queen. He's a good man. And a brave one. A great man. No greater was ever born of woman. Yes. Well, uh, I'm off for Agilon if you're heading that way. No. No, my path leads to Galilee. Fortress of Machairus. I am merely fulfilling the word given me by the Lord Jehovah. You've been stirring up the people, causing discontent and disturbance. Would you not shout out if you saw a blind man walking to the rim of a precipice? If you kept to your baptizing and preaching of Jehovah, you'd be a free man now. But you, you had to proclaim judgment against me, my wife, the whole Herodian line. A ruler should set an example for his people of humility, reverence, devotion to God. Have you forgotten it was my father that built the temple? And never entered it. A king has a thousand demands on his time. Neither my father, my brothers, nor myself have ever interfered with the scribes, the priests, the temple. Not even with you, you shouter of doom. We've been more than tolerant. 
A man does not serve God by ignoring his commands. That seems to be the way you serve me. I am your king, you know. I seek to serve you. Oh. For the greatest service I can render any man, be he king or slave, by calling on him to repent his sins before it is too late. Sins, sins, sins. Can't you ever talk of anything but sins? Particularly my sins? Shouting insults, treasonous insults, the length of Jordan. Turning my people against me. If your people no longer respect you, I am not the man to blame. Then who is the guilty one? Name him. I'll imprison him instead. My father would have had you strangled months ago. You know that, don't you? Archelaus would have spitted you over a slow fire. If I dealt with you as my wife wants me to. But I respect your courage. I, I believe you really think these things that you say about ooh, repentance and all that. Possibly the Lord did give you certain things to do. You can't do them from a prison cell, can you? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with me. Yes, yes. But suppose you had your freedom. You could carry out your work better, couldn't you? Perhaps. Well, I don't want to stand in your way, but I can't have you denouncing me and my wife as you have been doing. So give me your promise to speak respectfully of my household or say nothing at all. And you're a free man. I will gladly speak well of you to whoever will listen. If you will repent, truly repent, and cast out that woman Herodias. But I am married to her. It was no marriage. She is your brother's wife. It is not lawful for you to have her. I am the king. I make my own laws. You, like every man, will have to answer to the Lord. God. God! Take that man and throw him into a dungeon. Behold the king, Herod Antipas, Tetrarch of all Galilee. Pouring his courage too late as usual. At least I don't slink behind drapery, the eavesdropping like a scullion maid. I did no hiding when I was wed to Philip. He was a man, not a cringing, superstitious fool. Afraid of a half demented wild man from the hills. I'm not afraid of him. No. No. It's a political matter. These accursed followers of his. Oh? It's an unarmed rebel that you fear. I don't fear the... I've heard all I want to on this matter. No doubt. You, the king. You'd rather plead with him, bargain with him. After all the things he said of me. The shame he brought on my name. He'll have no audience in the dungeon. He won't need one. When the word gets out that he lives, and it will get out, you know it will, men will say, Herod fears to kill him because he spoke the truth. Nonsense. You do think so? you fear that he really is a man sent by God. Oh, you fool. You drunken, craven fool. Hey, you 
Japanese. Or yourself. Any luck? Luck? We've done nothing but strain water through our nets. To the south, the middle, and here. How about trying the north end tomorrow? Not us. We wasted a whole morning there. Well, fish or no fish, the nets have to be hung. Andrew. Andrew. Huh? Yeah? The nets, remember? Oh, sure. <laughs> that walk back from the Jordan must have worn you off. You've been half asleep ever since. No. No, just thinking. That John fellow? Mm-hmm. Only you could have heard him. Just once. One day he'll come to Galilee. Escape from Achiris? Or be released? Not while Herod Antipas lives. Even if he does get away, he'll likely head toward Philip's territory, not Herod's. Not if Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled. I had Shalio read it to me again last night. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, towards the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light is dawn. That could mean, well, something else, not just the Baptist. No. No, it must mean him. The fire, the sureness that he had. It was, it was like a light, like a great flame burning inside of him. Well, let's hope it does mean him, that it does come true. It will. It must. I saw you by the Jordan. You're the Nazarene. Simon. Simon, come here. Well? This is the man from Nazareth. The one who went into the wilderness. Oh, the carpenter. No more. No longer will I work with wood. Now my work is with mankind. This is my brother. Simon Bar Jonah. Simon? Just what work is it you do with men? I bring them hope. New hope. For the kingdom of God is close at hand. And his forgiveness ready for all who repent and truly believe. That's what the Baptist meant when he said, one who comes after me. You. You're carrying on his work. He made quite an impression on my brother. You said quite a task for yourself. Is there anything I can do? I mean, anything we can do to help you? Teaching and preaching's not our line. Won't We're... you be our guest in our house while you're here? I'll be honored. Well, it's no palace. We're not landowners. We're just fishermen. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And on the Sabbath, he spoke in the synagogue at Capernaum. And they were astonished at his teaching. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. There he is! Ah! I see him! I see him! I know you! I know you! You filthy Nazarene! Murderer! Killer! Destroyer! Who 
What have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth. You've come to destroy us. I know who you are. You holy one of God. Be silent. Come out of him. Reports of Jesus of Nazareth spread throughout the city. Yes, Gemeth, the madman, the big fellow. He's staying with Andrew and Simon. They say he cured Simon's mother-in-law of the fever just by touching her hand. I don't care if it's sorcery or not. I'm taking my boy to him as soon as the sun sets and the Sabbath ends. And as sundown ended the Sabbath, they brought to him all who were sick or lame or possessed until it seemed the whole city was gathered together about the door. More in there? Plenty. Where did they all come from? It's hard to realize that there's so many sick people in Capranium. And a hundred, even two hundred more outside the gate. What a day this has been. Andrew, hmm? how long have you known this man, Jesus? Since you have? No longer? I saw him at the Jordan, but I didn't get a chance to meet him. When we went for the bench, we heard some men talking, saying his power, curing the madman, healing these people, that it was black magic, the devil's sorcery. Sorcery? Nonsense. The devil brings evil, not good. Even an unlettered man knows that. Well, yes, I guess so. You know it's so. You're educated. What do you think of him? I, I trust him. You? Completely. I don't understand it. I can't explain it even to myself. But the way I feel about him, I'm just a fisherman. I feel at home among men like ourselves, but not with scribes and teachers, men with great knowledge. Yet this Nazarene reads the Torah as easily as any scribe. He speaks with the sureness of a priest. He knows more than any man I've ever met. Still, I like him. Yes, I... I like him. On the following morning, as the sun rose over the mountains on the far shore of the Galilean Sea, a man left Capernaum by the western gate, seeking solitude in the lonely hill. It's the morning already? Must be, the sun is up. <laughs> but I'd never get to sleep last night. I kept thinking about the Nazarene. What's all that noise? Crowd outside, trying to get in the gate. I hope they haven't awakened him. Let's go and see. Good morning, Myra. Good morning. Is breakfast ready? Not yet. Good morning, Andrew. And to you. Oh, those people. Don't they know our guest needs his rest? I shall quiet them. Andrew, wait. The healer isn't sleeping. He's gone. Gone? 
Gone where? When? Well, early, before daybreak. Are you sure? Yes, as I came to kindle the fire, he was leaving by the gate. But why? Well, I don't know. He didn't speak to me. I don't think he saw me. Did you say something to him last night? Only that he was more than welcome. Oh, guest doesn't just leave without a reason. Your mother. She's always complaining. Simon, he cured her fever. Yes. Well, someone must have said something. I was the one who invited him. Whatever it was, we've got to find him. Go to your brother's house and ask them to start searching the city. We'll get James and John and cover the hills. Uphill is harder than rowing. Sit down and rest yourself. Why'd you slip away from the house this morning? If anyone in my family said anything to annoy you. No, no, they were most gracious. You're sure? Of course, I'm sure. Then why did you come up here? To be alone, to think and meditate. Are you finished? Yes. We better get back. Everyone's been searching for you. People have been clamoring outside our gates since sunrise, demanding to see you. Well, shall we start? Not to Capernaum, James. The whole city's waiting for you. Let us go on to the other towns, that I may preach there also. Rabbi, if you were looking for a catcher of fish, it would be different. I'll haul a net or draw an oar with any man. But to talk to people, help you preach... Take these Zebedees. They're smart, educated, even if they do work in their father's boat. Or my brother Andrew. He's thought of nothing but religion since he heard that John the Baptist fellow. They'll fit into your plans. But a fellow like me. You said you wanted to come with me. I did. I do. Then come you will. And so began the first Galilean mission, bringing a new light to those who had sat in darkness. 